Good morning, let's talk hoops. Did I cook with that intro? I don't know. Today we're just testing something out. I feel like there are a lot of people that don't get a chance to watch basketball in a game like last night where it was an 11-game slate, and I want this to be the source where they can kind of keep up with the league without having to watch every single minute of every single game. So again, 11 games last night. Pretty much every single team that wasn't a part of an in-season tournament game played. And we got crazy performances, we got game winners, and we're going to talk about it all. Leave a like. Starting off with the number one performance of the night, Joel Embiid going into D.C. And dropping 50, 13, and 7. Come on, man. How do you stop that? Now, admittedly, D.C. is a very thin front court where it's like, as you can see, Gallinari in the zone at the center position. It's like there's no real resistance and Joel Embiid took advantage of that. Even in when, oh my God, hold on. Can I get that one again? Because that, that one went under the radar for me. That one went under the radar for me. Hold on. Look at the shake. He been working with Hakeem? He had to be, because that is a bucket. Another storyline from this game is that Kelly Oubre was back. Obviously, Kelly Oubre had missed a bunch of time with him getting hit by a car. It's a story that you can, you can look up. I'm not... Going to talk about it too much, but he is back playing basketball and he was crucial in the fourth quarter for a win. The second best performance of the night is Luka Doncic dropping 40, 16, and 10 in just 31 minutes. This man Luka went into halftime in this game with a 28-point triple-double. He had a 30-point triple-double in just 20 minutes played. I'm not taking nothing away from the legendary performance, but this was the start of five for the Utah Jazz last night. Keontae George, rookie. Ote Abadje, year two. Sim Simone Fontecchio, import player from Italy who, who doesn't play a ton of minutes traditionally. John Collins and Omar, year seven. That might be the worst start of five we've seen so far this season. Again, not taking away from Luka Doncic's 40-point triple-double, but I'm just saying... This man, Keontae George, was a minus 48 on the night. That, that's all I got to say. Some people are saying that Luka Doncic got that new dad swag. I mean, he, he just welcomed baby girl to the world. Congratulations to the Doncic family. But he also started wearing a, a, a headband. The thinnest headband. It's like a ponytail holder. Headband Luka, I guess. We dig it a moment when things got chippy between Luka Doncic and Chris Dunn. And Legends underscore NBA got the audio because somehow he always does. <laughs> Hand in the face, Luca smiling. He never lied. <laughs> he definitely was giving them boys buckets. The third best performance of the night is Desmond Bain dropping 49. Eight and six, a career high for Desmond. It feel like every single team is trying their very hardest not to let the Detroit Pistons get in their streak. Because now with this loss, what is it, at 17, 18 straight losses for the Detroit Pistons? And this was one of the games where they was into it late. But as you can see, Desmond and, and the Memphis Grizzlies went on a nice little run. And this one is the icing on the cake. Pull up, mid-range jump shot, 49 piece for Desmond. One thing I thought that was interesting in this one, Monty Williams was playing his rotation. And we saw Jaden Ivey was the 11th man on the court for the Detroit Pistons. There's a lot of things going wrong in Detroit. I just didn't expect that Jaden Ivey was going to fall almost completely out of the rotation at one point. I wanted to get his man top three performance of the day, but his team ended up losing. But Paolo Bancaro had 42 points and he only made one three. A good old, fa like a, as old fashioned of a 42 piece as you can could get mid-range jump shots and, and buckets straight buckets but they lost because the Cavaliers are really on their stuff they've won seven of the last ten they're starting to look more cohesive after a slow start with all of the injury we also got a game winner last night here's Trey Young and Dennis Smith Jr. step back three he hits it 16 seconds ago put them out by one he's saying it's cold in here ice tray no timeouts I mean they have one to give but they say hey we gonna let him run his stuff Mikel Bridges tells Smith and then we get out of the way here comes a screen from Claxton Mikel Bridges get downhill tough midi with four seconds to go the Atlanta Hawks call timeout they didn't get up a really good shot and just like that uh, I'm not going to say what Twitter said. Th these are two teams that are teetering around 500. So people are saying this was battle of the mid. And I'm not going to say it. I mean, even though I said it, I'm not going to say it. These are two good-ish teams going head-to-head. -head, and we got a game winner. So shout out to Mikael Bridges. Back in the 1996-1997 season, the NBA started to track lead changes in like a singular game. Well, this game had 43 different lead changes, which is the most we've seen since they started tracking it. Also, shout out to Trent Wofford for his reaction to the game winner. Just, just look at him in his corner on the bench. Hey, he, he held this stance for a minute, then ran on the court. The Clippers had a signature win. 
Like, probably their best win on the season. Last win versus the Warriors, I said, was their best win of the season. They doubled down and had another one versus the Denver Nuggets. And this was the worst shooting night of Nikola Jokic's NBA career. A graphic they showed during the game, 9 for 32. That is 23 missed field goals, the most in Nikola Jokic's career. Did he feel the wrath of Daniel Tice or Zubac? I actually don't know. I, didn't, <laughs> I only watched the last couple minutes of this game, so I had to go back and see how the heck did we get Jokic missing 23 shots. But the Clippers did it, and they got a very, very big win. This is two in a row. This is what? Oh, six of their last 10. Why did I think it was a little bit better than that? Uh, six of their last 10. They're close to 500, so give, give it a little bit more time. Tyron Lewis said he needed at least 10 games. I actually think it's been about 10 games since the James Harden trade, but give it a little bit more than 10 games, I guess, but a huge win versus the defending champion. In one of the other games earlier today, uh, Rudy Gobert gets a standing ovation from the home crowd of Minnesota as they were up by nine points to 20 seconds ago. He was very close to a 2020 game. It was Frenchman versus Frenchman, and the two, I mean, the three times, sooner be four time, DPOY, look at those fans. Based on what last year was, I thought I would never see a time when the Timberwolves fans gave Rudy Gobert a standing ovation. And here we are. They're the number one team in the entire league, and they continue to pile on win after win after win. This is back-to-back -back dominant performances offensively and defensively for Rudy Gobert, so watch out. He might make an all-star appearance. Also in this game, we saw Zach Collins shoot 6 for 20. I don't know a situation where Zach Collins should be getting 20-plus shots up. And we also saw that the Spurs changed at the starting lineup. A point of contention for a lot of fans like, hey, the Jeremy Sohan experience at point guard is not working. So he was out of the lineup. I'm like, okay, cool. Are we going to get some, some Trey Jones? Nope. Jetty Osman, welcome to being a starting point guard of the San Antonio Spurs. I don't understand. The Bulls ended up winning the game against a beat-up Charlotte Hornets team. That's not the story today for the Bulls, though. Zach Levine were missing an additional three to four weeks to treat his right foot inflammation. And because a lot of players are eligible to be traded December 15th and more players are eligible to be traded January 15th, there is a chance that we might have seen the last minutes of Zach Levine as a Chicago Bull. I got mixed feelings about it. I've been watching the man play Chicago for six and a half years. So if he ends up getting traded in the last memory I have of him is them losing by 50 to the Boston Celtics, it's just not going to feel great. Get well soon, Zach. We'll see if the, <laughs> the Bulls trade him while he's rehabilitating or whatever. The story of this game should probably be about how Caleb Martin had one of his best games of the season. But instead, I walk away from it continuing to be impressed by Jaime Jaquez. This is a game with Miami. He went into Toronto and got a win relatively easy. And Jaime kind of did a little bit of everything. Look, look, like, look at that. That's on, that's on Scotty Barnes. Shout out to Jaime Jaquez. Also, no bad amount of bio in that game. They just... They just, they just do that type of thing. One day, the Miami Heat look elite. The next day, they look less elite. Jimmy Butler said that they have looked mediocre at times. So I don't know what to think about him. But again, how many hot cast has been great. Speaking of great, let's look at some Alperin Shingun assists, baby. That's one right off the Dylan Brooks. It was a long assist. You know what I'm saying? Looked like more than just a couple dribbles. But hey, an assist and assist nonetheless. The best home team in the league went against the best road team in the league. Two of the younger teams in the association. And the Houston Rockets walked out of there with a win. Let's enjoy some Alperin Shingun assist for a second another really good performance from him they had a bunch of people that showed out um and, and showed up for this one there's another one from Alper and Shingun having a center that can be uh labeled as your best playmaker goes a very long way a weird possession right here look at it fight for it and the dish off to Dylan Brooks Dylan Brooks did not expect that ball to go to him under uh, over an underpass Dylan Brooks basically missed it but Lou Dorr saved and whatever Jabari Smith Jr. in this game attempted four shots he shot 50 percent dope six total points he had 18 rebounds and put the clamps on Chet Holmgren. It's a very inter Jabari Smith is a very interesting case of a top three pick having a, a mediocre year number one and year number two not seeing his numbers jump off the page. But if you're watching, he looks significantly better than he did last year. Now, the Houston Rockets are the only team left in basketball without a real win. But if they continue to be this dominant on, on <laughs> at home, maybe you don't, you don't need to win one road game. It's overrated. It's overrated winning on the road. You go on the road, you 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 eat new food, you you. Do tourist stuff, and that's it. No hoops. And the last game of the day saw this up by one with 13 seconds to go. Steph Curry versus Anthony Simon. Steph Curry stepped back three. Boom. 
That's the dagger. It was the first game back from Anthony Simons. He looked pretty good. The This young Blazer team has been one of the better defenses over the last couple weeks. So I'm interested to see if they keep that up. Uh, they lost to the experience and, and grit and greatness of Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors. And that's it. That's everything from the association on an 11 game slate. Tomorrow, or I guess tonight, we get in-season tournament semifinals. And that should be amazing. The NBA dropped this tweet about the, the in-season tournament semifinals court. And y'all, it's bad. <laughs> it's bad. I've been hating the super colorful courts. This is, this is the same thing. Um, the big pop of the blue was just a little bit too much in my eyes. One of the reasons I like the, the quarterfinals is we didn't see a bunch of crazy courts like the super red courts, Chicago, Miami, or Toronto, or whatever. But now we get the super blue court. Thought at all about how you're going to celebrate if you're able to pull this off? Man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we ain't thought about it, but I know it's going to be a good time.